So I wanted to take just a minute to walk you guys through some of the procedural aspects of the SQL project. The SQL project assignment file was just uploaded to Blackboard on Monday, March 23rd. If you download it, it looks something like this. Uh, so as you scroll through, there's a little bit of detail about due dates and things like that. And then some information about how to download SQL Developer, which is the software you will be using to connect to the Oracle server and execute your queries. So go through all of that. And uh, I'll just demonstrate real quickly how to set up the connection to the Oracle server. Uh, let's bring this over here. So when you start up Oracle SQL Developer for the first time, the console is going to look something like this. You'll right click on the connections node and click new connection. For the connection name, this can be uh, really anything you want. For username, this is your Blackboard user ID. And then for password, it is your uh, PeopleSoft ID. Uh, I would go ahead and just click the save password box. That's going to save you some uh, effort down the road. For host name, you use this IP address here. So it is. And very important, you have to change the port from 1521 to 1522. And everything else stays the same. When you click connect, should take just a moment. And then you have your connection to the SQL project. Now, any, and if you expand this, you see you have a bunch of different things. In this area over here, you can type SQL queries. So I'm gonna start by just saying something like select asterisk from pilots, because as you'll see in the uh, assignment file, we're gonna be talking about airlines and pilots and customers in this, uh, in this project. So you can type our first SQL query, click on run statement, and now we get some output from the DBMS. In the assignment file, it suggests that you write your queries in a text editor, something like Notepad in Windows or text edit if you're on a Mac, and then copy and paste from your text editor into the uh, SQL developer software. That way you can just save all of your work in this Notepad or in this text file. So what I would suggest is setting up something sort of like this. Have a space for phase one, question one, phase one, question two, phase one, question three, and on down the line. And then you can just save this file as you work. And ultimately, I'll show you how we copy and paste this into the submission system. So let's work through number one together. Number one says we want to list all people in the passenger table, including their name, itinerary number, fare, and confirmation number, then order by name and fare. And your output should look exactly like this. Okay, so if you scroll to the very bottom of the assignment file, you'll see there is an entity relationship diagram that shows you all the tables and what other tables they're related to as well as all the data that's in each one of these tables. So you really should be able to write your SQL queries all in your text file without ever even running them in the DBMS, but you're gonna to wanna to run them in the DBMS to make sure they work right and kind of check your work. So I know right now we're interested in this passenger table. So what I'm going to do, because I like to start out very simple with any SQL query I write, I'm just going to start by saying select asterisk from passenger. So I think this is a good starting point. I'm going to save my work and I'm going to take this query and I'm going to go back over to SQL developer. I'm going to delete this test thing we did here and I'm just going to paste and hit execute. And uh, all right, so far it looks like we are in a pretty good place. We have our 13 passengers. I think the only thing that is not correct here is the, uh, the order of the tuples. So we want to order by name and fare. So I'm going to go and edit this, say order by, and I see the name of this attribute is pass name, P-A-S underscore 
name. I execute this. See, we're in much better shape now. It appears we're still not in exactly the right order. So I'm gonna modify this just a little bit more. Order by pass name, pass fair. Okay, so it's going to be first alphabetically by name and then within each name, order by this pass fair attribute. So I execute that and let's, uh, let's compare here. Uh, yeah, it looks like this is exactly the same. So I think this is the, this is the correct answer. So to make sure I don't lose any work, I'm gonna take this and copy and paste it into my assignment file that I'm, I'm working on. And I'm gonna save that. And then once I've answered all of the queries, I'm gonna go and copy and paste this into the SQL project submission system. Now, one of the nice things about being an IS professional is that if the software you need doesn't exist, you can just write it yourself. And for the last several years, I've used a couple of different methods for submitting the SQL project and all of them have been extremely painful to grade. So this year we're trying something a little bit different, which is the SQL project submission system, uh, which I created myself. The URL for this is https colon slash slash so you'll notice this is encrypted over SSL and then when you submit your password that also is encrypted in the database so I've done everything with an eye to security here the first time you log in your password is going to be your PeopleSoft ID so username, password, and it's going to ask you to create a new password at this first login. So that's what I'm going to do now. Once you create a new password, again, that's encrypted in the database, it's going to ask you to log in with your new password. So I'm going to do that here. Okay, now you see the three phases that go along with the SQL project. So we're currently working on phase one. I'm going to click on phase one. And you see the same 15 questions here that we have in the assignment file. There are some instructions here that you should copy and paste your SQL code into the text box and then click the save button for that question. So if the background of the text box is white, that means whatever you have there has not been saved. Once the background turns green, that indicates that this has been saved. So what I wanna do is copy from my text file, and I'm going to paste it into the SQL project system. It pops up and says, this answer has not been saved. Once I click save number one, the background turns green and it says saved. Okay, so as soon as I start typing, it says the answer has not been saved. When I hit save, that is now written to the database. Okay. At the very bottom of this page is a button that says back. When you click back, it takes you back to your uh, screen where you can select the different phases to work on. And if we go back to phase one, we should find that the uh, SQL query I've written there has been saved. If I make any changes to this, says the answer has not been saved. If I don't click save, you see that change didn't get written to the database, right? So make whatever changes you want, click save, and then that's saved to the database. So when the due date comes around, the SQL submission site is just not going to allow you to make any more changes and that's when I will start grading. Now, I did mention that we want to write our SQL queries in a plain text editor, not in Word. And let me show you why that is. So let's imagine we were writing a SQL query where we wanted to find um, all of the passengers who have a last name of Olson, O-L-S-O-N. So we could say select asterisk from 
passenger where pass name like uh, Olson. So this should find all the passengers whose uh, name ends with Olson. And we see we have these two, Ole Olson and Lena Olson. Now, if I had written this same query using Microsoft Word, copy and paste. I try to run this. You see I get an error message and that error message is because Word made these curly quotation marks here. So interestingly enough if in my SQL developer I were to just delete these quotation marks and recreate them this will now work, right? but that's just kind of a painful thing to have to do. So I would just suggest staying away from Word and only writing your SQL queries using a plain text editor. Hopefully this helps you get started on the SQL project and if you have any problems, just let me know. Good luck.